As you know, for the last X number of months, it seems, since Donald Trump threw his uh, hair into the ring, we uh, have been uh, playing uh, Casey Jones' Donald Trump's Hair, which was a song that uh, Randy Wang discovered on the interweb. I found it, and you know we're looking for something ridiculous about Trump, and it was funny, it was smart, and it is the catchiest song in the world. I know. It became an earworm for all of us. And uh, so we reached out to Casey Jones, uh, who we uh, found in a back alley in Reno. <laughs> <laughs> what she was doing there is, not, frankly, none of our business. But then we discovered that, in fact, she's a very accomplished singer-songwriter, worked uh, with uh, Kinky Friedman, who we've had on the show a bunch of times. Love Kinky. Uh, and had wrote uh, with Mickey Gilly, by the way, uh, I, I'm the one Mama warned about you, uh, w- warned you about, uh, which was a big hit for Mickey. And uh, she offered to come out to Los Angeles, her former home, uh, and uh, perform the song live for us. And that was too good an offer to turn down. So she's with us right now. It's a pleasure to welcome to the show Casey Jones. Casey, how are you? I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for Well, you're the first me. person who's ever said that. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody's if ever I, told if, us If that. I could just get one employee to say that they were thrilled to be here. Yeah, really. Uh, but we are happy to have you here. So now, uh, let's kind of work backwards. You're on America's Got Talent, and you do a lot of common novelties, what would be called novelty songs. Right. Uh, so you're a singing comedian, and... Uh, uh, you were going to perform on the show, and you wanted to perform Donald Trump's hair, right? Indeed, I did, yes. And this was uh, for my second audition for the Celebrity Judges, which was happen- it happened on May 22nd, just a couple months ago. My first audition was in February earlier this year. It's been a seven-month journey with them. But I begged them, really, to let me do Donald Trump's hair in my second audition. And at the time, the Donald had not thrown, as you said, his hair in the ring yet. <laughs> And so they were, he still had the Celebrity Apprentice on NBC. And so they, I guess, I can only guess that they were fearful of offending Mr. Trump. Um, and, you know, as, as you know, this song is in praise of Mr. Trump's quaff. It's, no, it's you know, a nothing but an homage. Exactly. <laughs> and so I fought them as hard as I could without, you know, uh, you know, going over the line of being a, you know what, and so they said, nope, you cannot do the song. And I'm kind of glad now that they said, nope, because now I get to share it with you guys. Well, we couldn't be happier. <laughs> so I, I just wonder if, you know, if things would have turned out more differently if they would have allowed me to do it. Because uh, I know Howard Stern is a big, you know, he's got a great relationship with, with Donald Trump and uh, has had him on the show. Have you ever heard from Trump's people about this? Not yet. Now, you see, I don't know why he doesn't take it as, uh, as a campaign song, because, you know, when, when Hillary, when Mrs. Clinton uh, jumped into the race, uh, she uh, rolled out some nitwit uh, campaign song. Randy, do we have the Hillary song available by any chance? <laughs> oh, have you go. heard this yeah. one? I don't think Oh, no, so. this was a big fan for it. This was an official campaign is this song. legit? No, yes. it is absolutely oh, okay. legit. Yes. This is uh, this is something that they paid somebody to write, and they rolled this out uh, as part of her campaign. And it's, uh, well, here it is. And now it's 2016, and this time I'm a thinking, guys, put your boots on and let's smash this ceiling. No, I've been thinking about one great lady like the women in my life. She's a mother, a daughter, and through it all, she's a loving one. Oh, there is something about her, this great lady. Once a first lady, she fights for country and my family. Now it's time for us to stay. Come on, stand up for Hillary. Doug's so, actually standing up. So you see, oh, they us. do it every time they play the song. Uh, Him and Randy stand that's up. That's the and most sing. exercise I've Pathetic. gotten it's in a, years. It's a little lethargic. Yeah, I think it's uh, <laughs> juice it up a little bit. Anyway, it doesn't say anything about an email server or anything. Uh, or white water they left out. I don't know how they yeah. got left out. Anyway, so uh, so the America's Got Talent people wouldn't let you do the uh, Donald Trump's here. So what did you sing on America's Got Talent? Well. Uh, th- for my second, I did. I got to do the song for my first audition, which is a song on. I have an album called "Wait." Uh, Every man I love is either married, gay, or dead, live. <laughs> and on that album is a song called "Waiting for the Guy to Die." 
So that first audition, for whatever reason, even though I got a standing ovation from 5,000 people in Newark and all the judges enthusiastic, they never even aired that audition. Which what was, is that? Can we hear a little of that? Yeah. Sure. Um, this is a, 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 every guy I love. Oh, well. I'm waiting for the waiting guy to die. for the guy to die, yeah. I married a man who's 95 and wealthy. Now I'm waiting for the guy to die. Oh, dear. <laughs> the doctors assure me he's not very healthy. I'm waiting for the guy to die. Oh, what a thrill when they read his will and everything he has will be mine. Yeah. What's meant for his kiddos will go to his widow. I'm waiting for the guy to die. No, why wouldn't they put that on the air? Well, they, they loved it when no. I, but they never aired that audition. And I mean, all the all the judges were enthusiastic. Howard said, "You're my favorite audition of the day." For whatever reason, they never showed it. So then, oh. when I, on the second audition, which was in May, uh -huh. uh, which was the one I wanted to do Donald Trump's hair, they said no. And then I said, okay, then I want to do a song that I wrote called I Hate Your Lousy, Rotten, Stinking Guts, But I'm Not Bitter. <laughs> well, all right. And Makes sense. You want to hear a little of that? Sure. I went down to the mall and bought a voodoo doll. It's amazing just how much it looks like you. Stick a pin here, stick a pin there Chop off all that long brown hair Honey, I got all the tools To remove the family jewels <laughs> Because I hate your lousy, rotten, stinking guts But I'm not bitter <laughs> Just my luck, you stupid schmuck You boinked our babysitter Well, if you were here right now your face in kitty litters Cause I hate your lousy, rotten, stinking guts But I'm not bitter <laughs> Well, Casey Jones is our in-studio guest uh, CaseyJones.com K-A-C-E-Y Jones.com And by the way, uh, Donald Trump's hair is available It's uh, on a disc along with uh, 14 other wonderful uh, tunes And uh, when uh, we come back Casey's going to perform Donald Trump's hair live Now those of you who have been listening to the show for a long time Have heard the song through and through uh, There is one word that has been changed From the time that Casey originally recorded this And if you can identify that one word 800-222-KABC You'll get a signed copy of uh, Donald Trump's hair. Cool. Uh, so uh, be listening. Sharpen your ears. We're going to step away for a minute, get some traffic. Come on back and hear Donald Trump's hair live. Here's Bill Thomas. So uh, why don't we uh, turn the studio over to the wonderful Casey Jones, CaseyJones.com. And remember, if you listen very carefully, one word is different in the live version we're going to hear from the recorded version. If you know, if you can identify that word, 800-222-KABC, and we'll get you a signed copy of the CD, Donald Trump's hair. Whether a bull or bear market, his tresses are always a target. But this pompadour should be admired. And if you don't agree, then you're fired. Donald Trump's hair, Donald Trump's hair. A girl could get lost in there, way up in there, in Donald Trump's hair. I really don't care if it's full of air. In fact, I really like that word air, H-E-I-R, E-double-S. He's got the bouffant that I want And I want what I want Like Melania Spending my hours Up in Trump Towers Running my hands through his locks And his safety deposit box <laughs> Donald Trump's hair Donald Trump's hair Oh, so precariously perched up there You can't help but stare 
at Donald Trump's hair. I'm willing to bet he owns stock in Aquanet. And why hasn't he fired his stylist yet? He must like the glare of his blonde helmet hair. Comb over, comb over. I wish he'd comb over and let me just touch it one time. I'd fondle each follicle that sprouts from the donicle. It's so stiff and never goes flat. How do he get his do to do that? <laughs> I want to see proof. What's under that poof? Is it Jimmy Hoffa or just more of his loot? What else is in there in Donald Trump's hair? Could it be landfill roadkill, a bottle of bush mills, or maybe a baby raccoon? The Harlem Boys Choir, all those people he's fired, or the entire cast of the Grand Ole Opry? Yeah! Donald Trump's hair, Donald Trump's hair. It looks like hell, but I don't care. He's a billionaire. No quaff can compare. His tonsorial deserves this memorial song. He's so debonair. Cause his mane is so rare Bop, 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 bop And he flaunts it with flair Bop, 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 bop Yes, a girl could get lost in there In Donald Trump's hair Ooh. Casey Jones, CaseyJones.com, by the way, K-A-C K-A-C-E-Y, Jones.com, and the CD Donald Trump's Hair is available uh, online, obviously. Yes. And CD Baby and iTunes and, and everywhere. Pretty much. You pick it up in your molars. <laughs> That's right. If you're lucky. We've got John on La Crescenta. He says he knows what word was changed. John, uh, what is the word that was changed? Well, uh, uh, Casey changed Ivana to Milana. That's exactly right. right. You are 100% correct, sir. We're going to put you on hold, and you'll get the signed CD uh, from uh, Casey Jones. Casey, that song is fantastic. It's really... And by the way, I'd like to mention my co-writers, uh, Becky Hobbs and Benita Hill. Um, we have a trio that we have been singing together for about 10 years. It's called A Cowgirl, A Diva, and A Shameless Hussy. Well, you are a shameless hussy, I aren't am. you? That was the name of your band. I had a group on MCA Records back in the late 80s, um, called Ethel and the Shameless Hussies. Yeah. I'd like to commend you for all the positive guy songs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's <laughs> hardly there's <laughs> hardly any. Uh, there, well, what's the word for, what's the male equivalent of misogyny? Uh, I don't, good point. Uh, well, it's called misogyny. life, actually. Yeah. Really and I is. should mention that most of those songs were inspired by my ex-husband, Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> most, I, I was only married to him for two years, but I got 55 songs out of it. Well, so. it was, was it worth the two years of hell? <laughs> well, it's getting, it's almost, it's I, almost, a couple Leveled more out. songs and maybe it'll work out for you. Well, listen, uh, it's a total joy, and we can't thank you enough for coming in and singing this for us. You want to sing us out with another tune? I would, and I would like to make a shout-out to the Sweet Potato Queens that are headquartered in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm their official songstress. And all the Earth Angels in Reno, Nevada, you know who you are. Thank you so much Aww. for everything you're doing. Right, and of course, uh, Casey is a Gilroy, California native. Actually, Las Gatas. Oh, Las but, Gatas. Yeah. So but, uh, a suburb of garlic. Somewhere in in Wikipedia land, they, they decided to put Gilroy, but my folks used to own a restaurant there, yeah. Okay, fair enough. All right, Casey Jones, take us away. What are we going to hear? I think we'll do one that was inspired by my ex-husband, <laughs> who stupidly said to me one day about 20 years ago, you know something, Casey? You're starting to get a little wide on the backside. Ooh. He said those words out loud, Terry. He said Terry, that to can you? Can you believe yeah. it? No. So, uh, by the way, he was an inch and a half shorter than me. Right. So here's what he got. I was primping in the bathroom mirror this morning while you were shaving your short little back. <laughs> I made the mistake 
of asking you, honey, does this moo moo make me look fat? <laughs> you said they don't call it a moo moo for nothing. You know, moo moo, like in cow. For a guy so teeny weeny, you can be a big old meanie. <laughs> it's time to take the gloves off now. Cause I can always get skinny, but you'll never be tall. I can slap on a girdle and make my big butt small. I can pop those diet pills by the pack, but honey, there's no Viagra for the inches you lack. I can always get skinny, but you'll never be tall. Ladies and gentlemen, Casey Jones, CaseyJones.com. It is 824. Traffic first on the fourth. Here's Bill Thomas.